raised by finances, investing, estate, and retirement planning? Well, I went to school so you don't have to. Welcome to Finances and with Kathy and Jennifer. Welcome to Finances and Pet Care. I'm Jennifer and I'm here with Kathy. Did you happen to decide to adopt a pet during 2020? I know Kathy did. Yes, I did. (laughs) Are you still thinking of getting one? The companionship is priceless. Both Kathy and I are pet owners. But what is the cost of your furry friends? So some big ideas to consider are what you will spend on food, vet services, emergency care, and other pet care services. We'd like to thank the owner of Bark Place in Chicago, Anthony Messick, for his advice and insight today. We'll be talking mostly about cats and dogs today, but the big areas that we'll focus on can be adapted to any household pet. The American Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals has prepared a financial breakdown for other types of pets as well. Some estimates for yearly cost for other animals are a rabbit would be about $800, a guinea pig $374, a ferret $613, a small bird $387, and a fish $327 $227 a year for a fish. I wonder if that's just a 10-gallon tropical fish or if it's something much bigger. I, I don't know. just seems like a lot. But I don't know. I mean, I thought about, like, well, if you have to buy the tank and all that stuff. I mean, well, I guess little tanks aren't that expensive. No, that's a good point, though. I mean, fish food has gotten expensive since I was a kid, maybe. I don't know. First thing we're going to talk about is the adoption costs for pets. The cats can be about $300 and dogs might be up to $660. One of the insight that Anthony had was part of that cost is actually vetting to make sure that you are really interested in adopting a pet, that you're not just going, getting one, and then saying, eh, it's not for me and abandoning it along the side of the highway. So that made some sense. The Humane Society uses a sliding fee scale based on the age, the breed, the size. And so the more in demand that an animal is or the younger that it is, they tend to go more quickly. And so those they charge a little bit more for so they can encourage some of the older or special needs animals to be adopted more quickly. These fees, though, might cover things like the exam distemper and rabies shots, any deworming they have to do, flea and tick treatments. Also canine heartworm medication or feline leukemia shots, spay or neuter surgery costs, 30 days of insurance, and a follow-up exam. They might also provide you with any needed medication for your new pet, sometimes food, you know, like 30 days worth of food or a collar or tag. So those are not all guaranteed that they're going to provide those, but that was pretty common, it seemed like, with the Humane Society. If you don't adopt a pet from an organization, if you buy the pet, if you buy it from a breeder or wherever else, or if you get a free pet, then you will also pay for the vaccinations on your own. And that can be anywhere from $50 to $300 for dogs and $100 to $300 for cats. The heartworm medication and tick and flea treatment would be about $50 to $100 for both. Spaying costs for females and neutering for males can be anywhere from $20 to $300. And it actually offers more than just keeping unwanted offspring. It also helps females prevent uterine infections and breast tumors. And this prevents cancers in about 50% of dogs and 90% in cats, while males can prevent testicular cancer and some prostate issues. You're also going to need to get a license if it's required where you live, which might cost anywhere from 10 to $20. You might seriously consider microchipping your pet because it can be a lifesaver if they're lost. Microchipping can run you about $50. This is where they take a microchip and they insert it under the skin between your pet's shoulder blades so they know where to look for it at all times. If your pet gets lost, they'll be able to return it to you because you're going to go online to whatever the website is that your vet is telling you about, and you're going to enter in your home address, your phone number. And that way, if it's lost and a vet or animal control scans your pet, they'll get your name and ways to contact you to get back with your pet. You also, of course, are going to need to buy bowls or beds or crates or leashes or whatever toys, and those can come to about $50 to $300. All of these startup costs come to the range of about $260 to $1,780 for dogs, and for cats, it's $370 to about $1,440. Luckily, there are some low-cost options for spaying and neutering. 
You can find organizations that will help with low-cost clinics. PetSmart has a charity arm that can help with these services as well. Nearby me is a animal shelter, and it does not matter where the pet came from. You can contact them, and once a month, they'll take the animals at 6 a.m., and you drop off your pet. They return your pet to you at 6 a.m. the next day. Well, you'll go pick it up at 6 a.m. the next day. They spay and neuter dogs and cats, and so that cost was substantially less than going through a vet. Obviously, they're using a vet to do the service, but less expensive alternative for having the service done. Another big cost is the cost of food, and that's going to be a recurring cost for the life of your animal. Like most things, the quality of the food is going to determine the cost of food. I just did a search on Amazon, and dry cat food was $0.06 an ounce for nine lives and $0.24 an ounce for Hill Science Diet. The size of your pet is going to determine how much you're going to feed them. So I know I'm just comparing ounce for ounce, but if you have a very large animal, you're going to be feeding them more than than a smaller animal. But still, that cost per ounce can help. Our kitties are now like little couch potatoes because we're keeping them inside. There's no answer to exactly how much you should be feeding a cat. Canned cat food is a major source of water for cats. And since they don't drink as often as dog, they're going to need another source of water. I checked out canned cat food as well on Amazon just because it seemed like a pretty standard price or a place that people could get materials from. And that was 10 cents an ounce canned food of Friskies and 36 cents an ounce for their own brand called Wellness, which was highly rated for the ingredients that they use. Dogs are generally going to eat dry food and the amounts vary as well. We found that a three pound dog would need about a third a cup of food each day. A 10 pound dog, about three fourths of a cup. A 30 pound dog, one and three fourths cup. And a 60 pound dog, about three cups of food a day. Dogs too benefit from wet food if they need more water, especially if you live in a hot climate or you could add in that wet food during the summer months. Or if your dog has trouble chewing or eating dry dog food for some reason. Canned food will take up a lot more storage space and it costs more as well. So dry dog food for pedigree was about four cents an ounce. Again, Amazon has their own brand and it happened to be the most expensive at $1.30 per ounce. Canned dog food was about seven cents an ounce for pedigree and $1.38 an ounce for one smart blend. There are also subscription plans on Chewy.com, and I'm sure there's other websites that do that as well. And they would include a discount if you sign up for recurring subscriptions to get your dog food or whatever it is sent to you. Another cost you need to think about are toys or things that would keep your pet busy because you don't want them busy with your things, your shoes or your couch or those types of uh, items in your house. Cats are completely entertained, though, by things that you have at home. If you have hair bands or bread twist ties or caps or paper bags, small, lightweight balls. Of course, you can go buy all these toys, but they really do love stuff that falls on the floor. i got to be honest with you, and it keeps them very entertained. You do have to clean out under your refrigerator frequently, but it, it keeps them entertained. The whole point, though, is is that you want to have something for them to do. You might also want to consider getting a scratch pole though, because it's going to help save on your couch and anything else that they might decide to start scratching because they need that for their nails. It's like a nail file for them. Dogs can also really benefit from some dog pet specific toys, chew toys in particular, because especially when they're puppies, they're going to want to chew on everything. So you want to get them a toy that they will chew on instead of your furniture or your shoes. The cost of chew toys can run anywhere from between $5 to $20. And that's just going to depend on your pet and how often you need to buy them. Cats are also going to require cat litter be bought for their box. And that cost over the course of a year can be anywhere from $200 to $250 annually. So these recurring costs for dogs and cats over the course of a year can be anywhere from $380 to $1,100 for dogs and $430 to $870 for cats. Vet costs are probably what you would typically think as one of your most expensive items when you have pets that you're taking care of. You'll want to consider the fact that you'll need annual veterinary care, and that's going to include an annual exam that would be probably anywhere from $50 to $100, vaccinations, $10 to $100, and any additional preventative medical care for $50 to $100. I I feel like anytime I take my dog to the vet, 
it's it's usually somewhere around $100 every visit. Your pets will most likely require some type of emergency care in their lives. But even like we said, those annual costs are going to add up. We found two different insurance options. One is called Pumpkin and the other one is called Lemonade. Pumpkin states that they accept any age pet, that your coverage won't decline if your pet is not up to date on annual visits, shots, or dental care. They cover behavioral and alternative therapies. If you have a higher deductible, that will lower your monthly payments. They do offer reimbursement rates of 50 to 100%. They cover annual costs anywhere from, depending on the plan you have, nothing up to potentially $2,500. We did a quick survey, um, just entering in our own pets information. And for pumpkin, kittens cost about $25 a month for insurance. A 10-year-old cat was about $88 a month. And a 15-year-old cat was $100 a month. And a dog that was around eight years old was about $100 a month as well. You can see that paying for in pet insurance can be quite expensive. That can come to almost $250 a month for pet insurance. What we're suggesting you might want to consider instead is taking some money and setting it aside in an account. Let it still earn some interest, but use that towards any payments you might have, especially any emergency kinds of care. It's called self-insuring, and you can just put aside some money, maybe not $250 a month, but you can put aside some money, and that way when you are going to need it. And if you own a pet, you're going to need it at some point, then you can use that money instead of having paid out for insurance and not needing it for many, many years and having paid out more than you're going to actually use. Lemonade also covers diagnostic tests, procedures, medication for accidents and illness, but they're going to charge you an additional fee if you want to cover wellness checks tests, and vaccines. They'll also charge you an additional fee if you want to cover exams and therapies. So you could choose the percent of the bill you pay. And I went on and I just said, we'll have them pay 90% of the bill with a max of $10,000 a year. That's that's a lot. <laughs> and 250 deductible annually. That came to $29 a month for a nine-month-old kitten. We're talking about getting close to 250 a month with four pets, it's going to be a lot of money to insure. And so consider doing self-insurance. And that way that money is available to you if you haven't had to use it, but you can make some interest on that as well. Yes. And the hope would be that over the lifetime of your pet, those emergency visits are very few. When you're self-insuring, you're going to be saving more money than if you were paying for insurance for many, many years and not really ever using it. Another potentially large expense that you want to consider is what plans you're going to make for your pet when you need to travel. So if you can't take your pet with you, then you need to find pet care for your pet while you're gone. You might have somebody in your family that is willing to do it for you, and that would be easy. Another low cost option could be um, to pay a neighbor or a neighborhood teenager that you know who could walk and feed your dog or come over and feed and play with your cats while you're gone. You could also, there's several websites where you can actually do a trade-off care with another family. You agree to take care of someone else's pet while they're gone for free, and then they would, ex in exchange, take care of your pet while you're on vacation for free. That's something that's pretty cool you could look into. If those aren't options for you, then you might need to board or kennel your dog while you're away. And those costs can definitely add up as well. The local charge near us can vary. $25 a night is a pretty good average, I would say. It also depends on what sort of care they offer. Like, are they offering private rooms with TVs <laughs> and the plush pillows? Because those are definitely options and they're going to be more than $25 a night. Or are you fine with just the kennel, the bear kennel for your dog? So those are all things to consider. So it could be around an average of $25 a night or $35 a day, some places up to $60 within 24 hours. So those costs would really add up if you're away for seven days, that could be up to $560. Definitely something to consider when you're thinking about the cost of your pets. 
Because if you're going to travel a lot, you need to budget this in. You need to be aware that you're going to pay some amount of money unless you can find someone to trade off that job with each other. You know, another family you can trade off, which is terrific because more than likely, you know, someone else who also has a dog or a cat that would be willing to do that. Mm -hmm. Many people also consider daycare for their dogs. I found here in Virginia that five days worth of passes was about $35 a day. That was $175 for those five passes. And you can also buy more multi-day passes. It was $870 for 30 days, and that works out to about $30 a day. They may offer scheduled playtimes like bubble chasing and wrestling with other toy. Um, They even offered webcams so that you could watch in on your pup while they were at daycare. It seems that many of these places also offer sort of what they call spa services for your dogs, but really they just include some sort of basic care, baths, nail trimming, ear cleaning, and sometimes even teeth cleaning. And most of those services seem to be around $10 to $15 each. You might also want to consider just paying a dog walker for day care if you're not going to be able to be home during the day. You could expect to pay maybe $25 a day for this service just to have somebody come and and, uh, walk your dog. If you're renting, you could also expect to pay a pet deposit up front, and that could run run around $200. It's just going to depend on the facility. And some even charge a monthly pet fee, and that could be probably between $25 and $35 per pet. So if you have more than one pet, you're probably going to pay pay that for all of your pets. And that that's going to include damage that your pet does to the place. If I know that deposit also is there for that, but part of the monthly is that they're not going to ask for a huge deposit. They're just going to collect it slowly over time. And the other part of that is a number of rental places actually have areas for dogs to run around and play in. So it's like a dog park. And so they're paying for the upkeep of that as well. So that's another part of what those costs include. If you own your home, then you still want to consider what you might have to replace place or repair due to damage from pets. As we mentioned before, pets often like to chew on things or scratch things. So you might need to replace or repair furniture. Carpeting over time would need to be replaced and any other household items. Your clothes may also need more care due to, you know, just maintaining the amount of pet hair that you have in your house. We have a general estimate of monthly pet cost for a household. The personal money management app, Mint, found that the average person spent about $112 a month on pets in a household. That's a lot of money. The whole point of this today, if you have not yet fallen in love with a pet and you want to bring one home, just be aware of what the costs are because it's more than just having that animal and saying, I'm going to feed this. There's a lot more to it, especially with travel and vet services and those types of things. Right. Anything else? The other thing that I did think about was that there are certain like dog breeds that are prone to different either diseases or cancers or just issues as they get older. If you're thinking of adopting a pet or buying a pet from a breeder, it's something to consider, you know, as you're doing your research for those types of pets, you know, you may have your heart set on a pet already and that's, you know, go for it if that's what you want. But as you're researching and thinking about it, if you realize that, oh, most of these dogs get cancer by the age they're 12 and that that's going to cause you a lot of extra vet bills and heartache, then, (laughs) you know, you want to just consider that in your, in your search. Sure. Because you you don't want to spend a lot of extra money on them, but more importantly, you want them around for a long time and you don't want them in pain and you don't want them to be suffering. You were mentioning about a breed that has back problems. I mean, things like that just to be aware of so that at least buyer beware, right? You're, you're making the choice. Yes, I realize that this animal might have this problem, but it's, it's what I still want to do. So, yeah. you know, knowledge is power. All right. Thanks for listening to Finances and Pet Care. We know you chose to listen and we're grateful. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe and share and consider leaving a review because it helps bring financial education to others and it helps them find us more easily. Please let us know what questions you'd like answered by going online to our website at financesand.net. You can now find infographics on these topics here in the show notes and at our website. Finances and does not provide tax or legal advice and nothing in this podcast is to be construed as such. Always consult a tax accounting or legal professional for advice on your specific situation. Remember, I went to school so you don't have to.
Can you sing the Schoolhouse Rock song? Now? Schoolhouse Rocky, Schoolhouse Rock. No, no, no sing the um. Imagine and a splash and over the horizon, what could it be? Looks like it's gonna be a free country.